Hello, hello, hey, hello, hello. Hey there, it's me, Shania, and I'm back again with another video. Shania, Shania. If you're new to this channel, my name is Shania, and on this channel, I have loads of sewing tutorials. Some of the tutorials are from things that I've made from scratch, from fabric to finish, and some of the tutorials are of garments that I've upcycled and refashioned. So check it out. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make this super cute, um, tiered ruffle maxi skirt and the basic steps for this skirt is the top of the skirt the ruffles and then just putting it all together so three basic steps that's that's doable right if you like this skirt and you're looking to create like a full look like a full outfit then you should check out the tutorial on how i made this super cute top because this is the sister to that skirt um, and you can make both of them, put them together, and shine like a star, honey. Shine like a star. Let's get into it. So fun fact, I'm actually using an old bed sheet to make this skirt. Um, so what I want to do is I want to measure from the top of where my waistband is going to be to just below my butt and that's going to be where the first tier of the skirt is going to be. So I measured mine about 11 inches. Then from there I'm taking my torso block. I have a link in the description for these torso blocks or you could go to my website and download standard size ones. Um, and I'm really just using the waist down for this tutorial. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one of them, the front one, and just put the back one aside for later. I'm taking some tracing paper. Um, I also have a link for this down below. I think that this is the best to use because it's transparent. Anyway, um, I'm putting this on top of my, I'm putting the block on top of my paper just putting down some paper weights to keep it flat and I'm tracing from the waist center front line all the way down to the hip and I'm just um, tracing both sides of e that section <laughs> then after that I'm just gonna connect the two points at the top just make sure that you're using the right angle of your ruler so that you have an absolute straight line um, and then from there, I am starting from the top and then I'm just making sure that the line is 11 inches. So in your case, it'll be whatever measurement you got for measurement A. And then I'm using the right angle of my ruler to draw a straight horizontal line across. Doesn't matter how far out it goes. We're just gonna bring the slanted line down to meet that horizontal line. I prefer to use a curved ruler just because my hip is curved. But if you don't have one, you can kind of just eyeball it so now I'm just measuring my elastic and it's one and a half inches long or wide I guess you'd say and I'm just marking off 1.5 inches from the top of my pattern and this is going to be the elastic um, pattern and then I just connect all those dots to make a straight line so I have the top part which is for my elastic and I'm just titling it and a fun fact here is where I realized that it was not smart to use a marker because it bled through my white paper. So if you see any marker or strange markings, it's because of this not so brilliant idea of mine. Anyhow, so after you title your pattern pieces, you're just going to cut it out. So now I'm taking my waistband pattern and I'm placing it on top of my folded fabric. Make sure the wrong side is facing up. And I'm just going to measure my waistband, the top part of my waistband, and mine is 8.5 inches. So what you want to do is you want to add 3.5 inches to whatever measurement you get for your waistband. So in my case, it's going to be 8.5 plus 3.5, which is 12. So I am going to use my ruler and starting from the edge of my fold, I'm going to measure 12 inches. Um, and then I'm just going to draw a straight horizontal line. I'm drawing a straight horizontal line because I don't want my waistband to have that original diagonal that it had. I just want it to be a straight rectangle. The length of your waistband should be um, your waistband elastic times two. So in my case, it was 1.5. So the total length would be three inches. You want to just add seam allowance all around your pattern, which would just be the top, the bottom, and the right side. Um, and then you want to cut it out and you want to cut two pieces because you'll have the front and you'll have the back. 
um, and you want to remember to transfer your seam allowance line to both sides of the folded fabric so that when you open the folded fabric you'll see that your seam allowance is evenly all throughout the pattern again you want to repeat this step for both of your waistbands and you can see that my fabric was not folded correctly and that's why my waistband came out so uneven so make sure your fabric is folded correctly before you cut okay so now i'm taking my tier a it says tier b but in the end i decided to call it tier a and i am not folding my fabric i'm just laying my fabric straight out because i want to try something different and I am tracing my tier A pattern um, I'm tracing the bottom and I'm tracing the top and I'm tracing the left side but I'm not tracing that center fold line and the reason why is because I'm going to take my pattern and I'm going to fold it I'm gonna flip it over along that edge that I just traced so that I can complete the full pattern so then I'm just gonna continue tracing along the other side of the bottom, the, the right side, and then the top. Um, and in the end, you'll see you have your full pattern and you don't have to trace, you don't have to fold your fabric to get the full pattern. So you'll need two pieces. You'll need one for the front and one for the back. So just repeat the steps for the two pieces. And of course, you want to remember to add your seam allowance to both pieces. So moving on to part two, the ruffles. We just worked on tier A, so we need to work on tier B and tier C. So in order to get the measurements for tier B and tier C, you want to go back to the drawing board and take your measurement from your waistband all the way to where you want your skirt to end. Looking back at it, um, I kind of wish I made my skirt longer, but whatever, it's all good. Anyway, so we need to get measurement B, and measurement B is the length of your skirt. To find it, you're gonna measure from your waistband to where you want your skirt to end. My measurement B is 39 inches. So, now you need to make your pattern for tier B. You can pause right here so that you can get these measurements down. But the length for your tier B is measurement B minus measurement A divided by two. And then the width is your torso block hip measurement times three. For tier C, it's the same, the same for the length. So measurement B minus measurement A divided by two. But then the width is gonna be your torso block hip measurement times 4.5. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Remember, you need two pieces for each tier. So when you're done cutting out your pieces, you want to just serge the edge of all of your pieces. If you don't have a serger, you can just do a zigzag stitch. So here I'm using a gathering foot to make my tier B ruffle. Um, and if you don't have a gathering foot, there are other ways that you can make a ruffle. You can check out my video here to get more information on how to do that. So once I finished gathering my tier B, you can see that it came out a little bit shorter. You might not have that problem if you use a different method, but if you do have this problem, you're just gonna take your hand and kind of stretch out the ruffle so that it lines up with the bottom edge of tier A. So now that we've finished kind of extending our ruffle, you can see that it lines up more better um, with the bottom of tier A. And just remember that whatever you do to one piece, um, you might need to do it to the other piece so that it's even on both sides. So now that we have tier A and tier B, we're just going to start by working on one side first. And we want to connect tier B to tier A. So the way to do that is we want to take tier A and flip it so that the wrong side is facing up and the top of the top edge is facing down and the bottom edge is now at the top. And then you want to just align the um, edges of tier A and tier B together, pin it down, and then you're just going to do a straight stitch along the seam allowance line. Here are the machine settings that I used for my machine. When you're done, it will look something like this, and you just want to repeat the same step for the other set of um, pieces, whether it's your front or your back, depending on what you decided to work with first. So now that we have tier A and B together, we need to put tier C 
together. So we're basically going to repeat the same step. We're going to start by ruffling tier C. So just use your ruffle, your gather foot or whatever method works best for you. And now that we have tier C as a ruffle, we want to connect it to tier A and B. To do that, we want to flip tier A and B. It's still on the right side here. And now that it's flipped upside down, we are going to take our tier C and flip it so that the right side of tier C is facing the right side of tier AB. And you want to line up the edge of tier C to um, what is now the edge of tier B. And you're just going to pin both layers together. And then you're just going to do a straight stitch along the top edge, along the seam allowance line. These are the machine settings here that I used. And when you're done, you're gonna repeat the same thing for your other set of pattern pieces so that you have your front part of your skirt and your back part of your skirt. And now you're just going to line up the front piece and the back piece so that they're right sides facing each other. And you're gonna pin along one side only. And then you're just going to do a straight stitch along the seam allowance line. And when you're done, when you open it, it will look something like this, voila, she's beautiful. So now you want to just hem the bottom edge. You can do a double fold or a single fold, whatever is clever. Um, and then you will just hem the bottom of your skirt so it looks like this. And now you want to close your skirt. So again, make sure that the right sides are facing each other. And you're just going to pin that other side of both layers. And then you're gonna do a straight stitch along the seam allowance line and your skirt will look like that, and you will turn it inside out, and you see, voila, you have a beautiful skirt, but now we need a waistband. Now we wanna take our two waistband patterns that we made earlier, and we want to put them so that they're right sides facing, and we're just going to pin down both sides, and sew a straight stitch along the seam allowance line. It'll look something like this, and you just flip it out so that it's on the right side. Now you wanna take your elastic and wrap it around wherever on your waist you want it to start. You don't want to stretch it while you do that you want to just take a pen and place a mark where your elastic needs to end and you're going to cut along the mark that you just made you're not adding any seam allowance to the elastic because of the way that we're going to close up the two pieces and this is how we're going to close it up just connect the two ends to each other and then just do a zigzag stitch um, a few times back and forth to really seal up the two ends together. And then it should look something like this. You're just gonna snip off your threads. Take your waistband pattern that we made in the previous step and you're gonna turn it so that it's inside out and the side seam is where you can see it. <laughs> and then you're gonna take your elastic where your zigzag stitching is and you're gonna line it right on top of the side seam of the waistband. Line up the bottom edge of your elastic to the top edge of the serging of your waistband pattern and then fold the waistband over the elastic so that the elastic is fully covered. Then you're just going to sew a straight stitch where the side seam is. Um, and then after that, you are going to cut your thread and then you want to just close the waistband over the elastic. So just sew along the seam allowance edge. As you can see, I had a difficult time because of how unevenly I cut my waistband, but for you, it should be a little bit easier. It should be a lot easier. So you're just gonna sew along that seam allowance line just above the serge edge. Um, and then you're gonna sew all around and at a certain point you'll see that you have more fabric than you have elastic left. So the way to fix that is to just kind of cut off your thread um, and then take your um, elastic and you wanna hold on to it while you begin to just pull your fabric down along the elastic so that way um, you'll see that your fabric will start to gather and at some point you'll have the same amount of fabric um, to match the same amount of elastic, if that makes sense. Um, and then you're just gonna kind of go back to what you were doing. So put it under your needle and continue to sew right on top of the seam allowance line to close the waistband over the elastic. Um, and that is pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have any questions about that part in particular because I know it's a little tricky. Um, 
And yeah, so you're just gonna sew until your waistband is fully closed and you'll see that you have a gathered waistband like so. Place your waistband around the waist part of your skirt and you're gonna make sure that the serged edges are facing the top and you're going to pin the side seams down and then you can eyeball the center front and the center back and place a pin there as well. Um, and then you are just going to do a straight stitch along the seam allowance of the top edge. And you might need to hold all layers um, and lightly pull so that you are evenly sewing all layers together. Um, and here are the mas machine settings for this stitch. Um, and when you're done, it will look something like this. This is what your skirt should look like. Super cute with its matching top. Remember to check out the tutorial for this top. You can also make this skirt a dress by pulling it all the way up to your chest and making a matching string or any string that you have and just wrapping it around um, like your upper bust area, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's super cute. I love, love, love this skirt. So happy with it. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit longer, but it's all good though. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, be sure to tickle that like button um, and leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to share some love because I appreciate that sort of thing. Um, and until next time, ciao.